Hi, this is Francesco Nagari, Deloitte Global FRS Insurance Lead Partner. Welcome to our IFRS 4 Phase 2 webcast, the webcast service that Deloitte offers to its clients, partners, and staff on the development of the insurance contracts project of the International Accounting Standard Board. Today's webcast is titled Education Session with the CFO Forum and New Completion Timeline, Further Discussions on Contracts with Participating Features. As always, our webcast is structured around the three items agenda. I will start by giving you the highlights of the latest ISB discussions, followed by a more detailed analysis of these discussions, uh, on, particularly on the CFO Forum's alternative proposal for the accounting for insurance contracts uh, with participating features. After that, uh, I will spend a few minutes at the end of the webcast uh, to give you an update on the next steps and the timetable. So let me take you through the highlights. The meeting uh, was held uh, nearly two weeks ago on the 19th of November. It was um, an educational session, uh, quite uh, a long one, took um, a good part of the afternoon of that day. And uh, the ISB um, came out of that session by uh, informing us through their staff uh, document uh, that uh, they are considering still the appropriate accounting for contracts with, with participating features. And they have uh, concluded after six months of uh, discussion and uh, uh, known deliberations at this stage that there are three critical issues. The first one is uh, how to account for the insurer's share of underlying items, including the effect of option and guarantees. The second one is how to allocate the CSM uh, in profit or loss. And the third one is how to determine the locked-in interest expense for profit or loss. On the 19th of November, the uh, representatives of the European Insurance CFO Forum, which uh, I'm going to refer to as the CFO Forum uh, for the rest of, web, of the webcast, uh, presented their alternative proposal for the accounting for insurance contracts with participating features, which, again, uh, for short, I will refer to as the alternative proposal. The ISB uh, held this session for educational purposes only, uh, without uh, planning to take any tentative decisions uh, on this proposal, certainly not at this meeting. Nevertheless, it was an important uh, uh, opportunity to observe uh, the reaction of the board members to this, uh, to this proposal, given that uh, uh, the proposal has received uh, quite an extensive uh, range of uh, support. The ISB staff paper that I was referring to earlier has been released last week, and this paper uh, although it is not an official board document, it's uh, the closest we can get to it, and it does give us some uh, important uh, uh, signals that uh, the timeline is, uh, is now going to change. And the change is, um, is a delay, a delay on the uh, uh, completion um, of the new standard, uh, which uh, uh, moves from uh, the first half of 2015 to the second half of, of 2015, so we should probably assume uh, prudently at least a six months delay on uh, whatever date you were thinking of before. Uh, this uh, six months delay uh, has um, a repercussion on the uh, likely effective date that the ISB will choose for the new standard on insurance contracts. Uh, and uh, based on this paper that the SB staff uh, published uh, last week, uh, it is now indicated that the 1st of January 2019, uh, rather than 18, uh, is the more likely uh, date uh, the board will be selecting, on the grounds that the board has committed officially and publicly to uh, provide uh, preparers of uh, financial statements with at least, uh, well, at least, with approximately three years uh, from the date uh, the standard is published. So let's move into uh, the uh, detailed um, discussion of, uh, of this alternative proposal. And what I would like to do is, uh, uh, first of all, to explain to you the, the six uh, principles that uh, have been used by the CFO Forum to prepare the alternative proposal. You can download uh, issue um, paper, so agenda paper 2A uh, from the ISB website if you want to read uh, the full uh, proposal in, in its details. Uh, but if you are happy with, uh, with my summary, there are six points. The first one is the scope. Uh, the scope that the uh, CFO Forum proposes is, uh, is broad uh, with no requirement to hold underlying items, which is a key 
feature uh, of the uh, ISB proposal instead. The second uh, principle is that uh, there should be no bifurcation of cash flows, uh, unlike the mirroring approach uh, set out in the exposure draft 2013. And this uh, single estimate of cash flows uh, should be uh, measured uh, with a single discount rate curve and uh, no different treatment uh, for options and guarantees. So effectively, a building blocks approach with a particular uh, point of guidance on the discount rate, which uh, I will explain in more detail in a moment. The third principle is that uh, there should be full unlocking of the contractual service margin for all assumption changes that impact future profits, including the change in value of underlying. So that means that uh, the assets that uh, may be supporting uh, the benefits uh, due to be paid to uh, participating policyholders will also affect the contractual service margin amounts. The fourth principle is that uh, this CSM, uh, which represents the uh, unearned profit of an insurance contract, uh, is released to profit or loss in a way that best reflects the transfer of services under the contract. The last two principles are about presentation. So the paper appears to indicate that the balance sheet would always remain the same irrespective of, of, of the uh, um, interest expense that is going to be presented in the profit or loss. This expense uh, will be calculated uh, producing a book yield rate that uh, will be applied to the uh, um, participating contracts uh, portfolio in order to uh, extract an interest expense that will be accounting, accounted for in a similar way to the uh, return generated by the underlying items. If the underlying items uh, are not accounted for at fair value to profit and loss, the book yield and the uh, discount rate uh, on the, for the balance sheet measurement uh, would uh, be different rates. And uh, the alternative proposal of the CFO forum explains that uh, that different uh, uh, value would be captured uh, through the uh, other comprehensive income reserve in equity. And uh, like for the uh, non-participating contracts, uh, the CIFA Forum proposes that uh, the choice of uh, these uh, accounting treatment for time value of money presentation should be made at uh, portfolio level. So these are the six principles, and uh, the debate that I'm going to uh, um, take you through focused primarily on the first four um, points. But we'll see uh, as we go through the rest of the webcast how um, the debate unfolded. Before touching each of these uh, principles, let me give you a couple of slides on uh, the CFO Forum's views and uh, the rationale that was uh, presented to the, uh, to the ISB uh, by the CFO Forum as to why the CFO Forum has got uh, to the point of issuing this paper and uh, having uh, some of its uh, most senior representatives. Uh, just to, uh, uh, to brief you in more detail on, on that particular point, we had the group CFO of AXA, the group CFO of Prudential PLC, and the uh, group uh, chief accountant of uh, National in Netherlands, which is the uh, spin-off of the insurance operations of uh, what was uh, once ING. And th these three... Um, uh, senior officers uh, uh, spent nearly four hours uh, explaining to the, uh, to the ISB uh, their proposal and to receive uh, several questions back. Now, the part that was uh, at the start of this uh, discussion was uh, really the statement as to why uh, the alternative proposal was on the table. The first uh, argument, uh, and you will not be surprised to hear it, is that this is a very material issue. We are dealing clearly with the uh, accounting uh, model for the most material liability class on the balance sheet of uh, insurance uh, companies, particularly the life insurance business. The second point is that uh, there is a need um, to be moving forward. Uh, the, uh, the constituents uh, of the IFRS uh, um, are de you know, demanding uh, the completion of the standard uh, but they are demanding it in a way that is uh, generating consensus rather than rejection. And, uh, and clearly, the, uh, the call for that uh, was felt very strongly in the, in the words that the CFO Forum used. They also observed that uh, as they looked at uh, the last six months of discussion, 
the uh, ISB uh, undertook uh, on the same subject, uh, a number of uh, concerns were, were raised by a, a wide range of uh, constituents and uh, the need for developing further the ISB proposal was felt uh, strongly. This alternative proposal from the CIFA Forum appears to provide a more meaningful and transparent view uh, of uh, the financial performance of, uh, of an insurer that issues participating contracts, at least this is what the CIFA Forum believes, and uh, presents uh, three uh, key attributes. The first one is that uh, there is a, a belief that uh, the performance will be represented in a more meaningful and useful way. Second, that uh, this alternative proposal would reflect better the hybrid nature of the interconnection between the value to the customer and the reward to the insurer, which uh, naturally creates a degree of, uh, of conflict, economic conflict, between the desire of the policy orders to receive the maximum amount from the underlying items uh, and the desire of the shareholders to be remunerated for the maximum amount of uh, money for the services provided. Uh, not uh, new in any contract, but in this particular instance, given that is uh, one contract that uh, requires uh, one party, the insurer, to split the, uh, the product of uh, um, some resources, uh, particularly uh, felt. The last uh, attribute is that uh, the alternative proposals should provide a level playing field, providing consistent accounting treatment for economically similar products and avoid creating artificial distinctions between products. And this, this particular point uh, we'll see in a moment uh, is uh, captured particularly by the first principle around the scope. The Civil Forum also expressed the fact that uh, these alternative proposals are not radically new. They actually have uh, substantial common ground with, uh, with the ISB proposals uh, uh, for non-participating contracts, in particular the use of current values and the uh, use of the uh, building blocks approach. There are concerns um, in the markets, according to the Zero Forum, that uh, artificial volatility in earnings uh, can uh, emerge from the uh, current proposals that the ISB is uh, considering, and the alternative proposals would actually provide uh, an effective solution to uh, those problems. The uh, ISB um, must avoid an accounting model that is not consistent uh, with economics of participating contracts because that will create a, a problem around the understandability of insurers' financial statements. The reason why the CFO Forum made that point so strongly is because there is a strong concern among the CFOs that investors would not be willing to invest in the insurance sector if it is not transparent and understandable, and that will create a, a higher cost of capital uh, to insurance companies than uh, the one that other industries would have to pay to raise money. The most important element uh, that the uh, CFO Forum wanted to draw the attention of the board is the uh, CSM uh, accounting uh, proposal uh, to uh, fully unlock that component of the liability so that it represents at every reporting date the full amount of unearned profits. Finally, uh, the CIFO Forum um, representatives uh, made the point that uh, their proposal has been supported by uh, a number of uh, constituents of the uh, IFRS uh, world, including uh, the European Financial Reporting Advisory Group, EFRAG, some standard setters, and other participants uh, in the insurance industry. Uh, although Deloitte uh, has not uh, written anything in, uh, in the public domain around uh, the alternative proposal of the CFO Forum. Discussion between uh, um, the CFO Forum representatives and uh, the Deloitte representatives have taken place uh, over the past months uh, on the grounds that Deloitte uh, was uh, uh, also a proponent of, uh, of an alternative uh, accounting model to participate in contracts. We published that in our common letter to the exposure draft uh, in October 2013 and uh, we still stand by it. Uh, we believe it is a good proposal, and it does have um, a significant uh, element uh, um, of similarity to the uh, alternative proposal of the CFO Forum, and it will be my care to uh, draw your attention to the areas where similarity uh, exists and where differences uh, may also exist. So let's start with the first principle the scope of the alternative proposal. 
The CFO forum proposes that, uh, that this should be applicable to all participating contracts which provide policyholders with a right to a variable return, either contractually or at the discretion of the insurer. And this is because the CFO forum considers that these contracts are, uh, are all economically similar. The ISB re-deliberations uh, um, to date would indicate a much narrower scope uh, that would uh, emerge from the application of this definition of um, contracts with an implicit management fee. What the, what the uh, CFO Forum uh, alternative proposal instead says is that the variable return could be based uh, on anything including uh, the performance of specific contracts realized and on reali unrealized investment returns on a specified pool of assets or the profit or loss of the insurer or the fund that contains the assets back in these contracts. So a, a number of uh, identifiable uh, sources that can be used economically to uh, contribute to a, a supplementary return that policyholders will be receiving. Given that definition, it was clear from the paper that the CIFO Forum would not expect that the definition of a participating contract uh, would include a requirement for those underlying items to be held by uh, the insurer. Two key points came out from the debate on the scope. The first one is uh, around uh, what really is a participating feature. And the uh, ISB members were challenging uh, the CFO Forum representatives by asking if uh, there are so many diverse forms of participation uh, that would, in fact, lead insurers to uh, create uh, mechanisms where a substantially large amount of the underlying item return would be retained by the shareholders, like 30 or 40 percent. The representatives of the, uh, of the, of the forum noted that, uh, as far as they know, the, the majority of um, participating structures would normally give a much smaller proportion of uh, returns to the shareholders as compensation for the service, and that is often uh, around 10 percent of the total. And this would be completely different to a performance fee that a hedge fund could charge to its customers, for example. The other point uh, was around uh, um, whether the uh, interaction of uh, guarantees um, in, um, in a participating contract uh, could uh, trigger a reclassification of that contract uh, out of the participating contract uh, category into a non-participating contract category. And the scenario that the ISB member put to the CFO Forum was uh, a particularly high guarantee that was uh, uh, embedded in an insurance contract, uh, participating insurance contract, uh, a long time ago when interest rates were much higher than they are now. And then as a result of this prolonged decline on interest rates, uh, the uh, benefit that the, insu the insurance uh, customer, the policyholder, receives is effectively always the guaranteed rate. And the uh, benefit of participating in the underlying item becomes effectively redundant uh, by the operation of the minimum guaranteed return. And so the board uh, asked uh, the CFO Forum, would you then reclassify out of participating contracts and your model this particular portfolio or not? And the uh, CFO Forum responded that uh, in their proposal, there is no reclassification. There is uh, a classification at inception, and that classification remains in place until the contract is derecognized. And they pointed out that this is in line with the current uh, IFRS 4 classification uh, regime for insurance contracts, uh, which uh, is often summarized with the, principles, with the principle that says, uh, once insurance, always insurance. And perhaps uh, we should start learning about the possibility of a principle that says once participating, always participating. Let me pause for a second here just to reflect on uh, the Deloitte position on this uh, first principle. And here we have actually uh, to uh, draw your attention to a difference uh, from, from the Deloitte perspective. We did not uh, agree with the, uh, a broad scope of, uh, of our proposal. We uh, recommended, in fact, that uh, the definition of a participating contract is refined, yes, in order to be clearly applic applicable to many different instances, but that the requirement of uh, either a contractually 
or uh, a statutory obligation to um, hold the underlying items must be in place in order for that contract to be considered a participating uh, uh, contract. So for us, it is a necessary condition to be a participating contract. And that's one area where we seem to have taken a different view on this subject uh, to uh, the one the alternative proposal uh, put forward. Moving then to the second key principle, the measurement uh, approach uh, and the single uh, estimate of cash flows with the single discount rate, uh, the CFO Forum uh, representatives explained here that uh, this one yield curve used for discounting uh, uh, should be applied to a, a single uh, probability weighted uh, estimated cash flows uh, that uh, will not be bifurcated in terms of uh, its component parts as uh, the exposure draft uh, 2013 uh, required and that this uh, single year curve uh, would be used uh, um, on a current basis and it would therefore change over time. The change would be uh, driven by uh, the uh, market input that uh, the underlying items will feed into uh, the determination of the, uh, of the discount rate curve because this curve would be effectively uh, based on the underlying items and these underlying items uh, current values and uh, current returns would be different year after year and so the actual mix of underlying items should always be reflected uh, in the book yield uh, that will serve to discount uh, the uh, expected cash flows from uh, participating contracts. The comments uh, that came out from the debate uh, uh, raised a few things. First one, um, some ISB members were concerned that uh, the book yield approach would create accounting mismatches where underlying items are accounted for F about rho CI, so you have uh, this uh, uh, dichotomy. Uh, the determination of the book yield uh, when a participating contract is not uh, wholly dependent on the return from the underlying item was another, another situation where this would be, uh, would be different. And the CFO forum uh, here uh, made reference to the, um, the fifth and the sixth uh, uh, principle uh, in their alternative proposal, which uh, uh, have uh, introduced uh, the uh, OCI solution. So if there is indeed a difference between uh, the balance sheet current yield uh, derived from the assets and the uh, P&L yield, uh, uh, that uh, the underlying items would generate in terms of their return, the uh, solution uh, under principle uh, five and six is that uh, you will adapt the PNL uh, rate, the book yield rate, uh, to be uh, matching the accounting uh, uh, return of the, of the assets if they're not a fair PNL, so that you maintain uh, accounting matching uh, and you only present uh, in the uh, profit and loss any mismatch which is uh, supported by economic reasons rather than accounting reasons. Uh, and that, to, to some extent, explains why interest expense uh, should mirror investment returns in the income statement, because clearly there are uh, economic uh, connections between those two sides of the balance sheet uh, and the ISB um, and the CFO Forum both agree that uh, accounting mismatches should be eliminated as much as possible. Uh, another point was whether um, the CIFA Forum considered the possibility for guidance about transferring assets between portfolios and, uh, uh, and how this uh, would impact the book yield. Uh, the CIFA Forum uh, uh, paper did not uh, specifically address this, uh, this particular point, but the CFOs uh, in the room uh, noted that uh, as far as they are aware of, uh, there isn't uh, much of, a, of an instance of transferring uh, assets, uh, and so that should be a fairly infrequent uh, event. But in any event, uh, that point was uh, taken on board uh, for further reflection within the CIFO Forum uh, on discussion group. Moving then to the third and probably most important principle, the unlocking uh, of the CSM on a full basis. This full unlocking, uh, which is um, a prospective full unlocking, uh, uh, results effectively in the remeasurement of the unearned profit at each reporting date. And the, uh, the proposal explains that uh, uh, it is to make it consistent with uh, uh, the prospective measurement of the CSM, which is done on day one, the inception date of the contract. So that uh, prospective reassessment of what the future brings us is really the fundamental logic that uh, underpins uh, the proposal. The CSM uh, 
should also be unlocked in that regard for, based on the assumptions that are associated with investment returns. And that means uh, not only the outflows uh, that will be payable to uh, current and future policyholders, as already set out in the uh, uh, IFRS exposure draft, uh, both last year and, to, and uh, in 2010. That principle has not changed since 2010, in fact. But also on the uh, shareholders component of, of those uh, uh, assumptions associated with investment return. And so the, uh, the CFO forum appears to be uh, suggesting that uh, the same logic that applies to uh, the outflows estimates should apply also to the, uh, um, the difference, the, the, the difference between outflows and inflows by making the inflows uh, a, a different uh, subset of, of figures. is not just uh, the expected future inflows that uh, will arise from the contract, but also the ones that will arise from uh, the uh, underlying items. And so that creates really the mathematics uh, uh, for, uh, for this new CSM unlocking the, the alternative proposal uh, would effectively uh, create these uh, new unearned profits and then would deal under the fourth uh, principle uh, on the basis uh, for allocating uh, this uh, uh, unearned profit to each reporting period. When uh, the debate uh, started on this particular point, uh, um, there were a few uh, comments uh, that uh, look for clarification. And the first one is one of those. Uh, so the, there were a number of board members that asked uh, um, how the fact that uh, in some countries unrealized profits uh, cannot be distributed to policyholders is dealt with in the proposal. And the CFO forum uh, confirmed that uh, both realized and unrealized profit would impact the CSM measurement, but that the allocation of, uh, of the profits uh, in each period may be uh, taken into account. Uh, uh, the, the fact that uh, some special rules may exist in, in a country uh, as to the uh, distribution of those profits to, uh, to the policyholders. The CSM um, is also unlocked for items that would otherwise be presented in profit or loss. However, items presented in OCI will unwind to zero over time, which is the same uh, logical basis the ISB accepted when uh, they uh, voted for the OCI solution in the 2013 exposure draft. So, so the CIFO Forum wanted to just draw their attention to the consistency of their proposal to the existing logic within uh, the uh, deliberations of the ISB to date. Another point is that the ISB noted that uh, uh, because of all these uh, um, accounting proposals, it would seem that the investor would have to look in at least three different places, the profit and loss account, the OCI statement and the movements of the CSM in order to understand the performance of an insurer. And that could be argued to uh, introduce complexity into uh, the financial reporting requirements of an insurer. Uh, the CFO Forum uh, observed that uh, remeasuring the CSM uh, is uh, actually an important uh, element of the, um, of the model, which is not uh, dissimilar to what the ISB has already accepted for uh, non-participating contracts, uh, here it is, uh, if you like, evolved to be uh, reflective of the economic reality that a participating contract uh, uh, generates. And in that context, uh, uh, another uh, group of board members asked whether the CIFO Forum had considered extending this uh, same idea to non-participating contracts. And the response was that at this stage, um, this option had been considered, but without uh, a formal decision uh, being reached by uh, the members of the CFO Forum. And so at this point, uh, uh, the, um, the representatives at the meeting uh, uh, just uh, took uh, the, the question on board, but without providing a final answer on, on it. The debate then moved on to the fourth uh, principle on the release of the CSM, and, uh, and here the CFO Forum argued that uh, there should be just a, a high-level principle, a principle that says uh, you should release the CSM in each period uh, based on the fulfillment of the services that you are providing under the participating contract. And uh, the guidance should just acknowledge that uh, those, those services could be uh, diverse. There could be provision of insurance coverage, there could be administration of the contract, uh, and there could be provision of asset management services. All those will feed into uh, a policy that will determine the basis for taking uh, these uh, components of the liability 
out of that component into profit or loss. That uh, uh, principle received a, a fair challenge to the debate. Uh, first one was the, the concern that uh, a number of ISB members raised that this is far too high level and uh, there will be uh, inconsistency in the application of such a principle. And that could be not only be across the sector, but even within the same company over time. And, uh, and the question whether this would be actually uh, a good uh, service to uh, the investor community. The CIFA Forum noted that uh, uh, although that is uh, potentially a, a risk, they don't think that uh, it would actually translate in, in, in reality because uh, uh, the, the nature of, uh, of participating business uh, is uh, such that uh, it is indeed diverse, uh, country from country, but that diversity uh, doesn't necessarily introduce uh, uh, dissimilarity in the, in the way the principle is applied. In fact, uh, they, are, they were very confident that uh, um, the new um, approach would uh, uh, allow insurance companies to make a clear disclosure of the earning pattern that they will be applying uh, and then follow it uh, uh, most likely uh, for many years to come. So this uh, uh, uniformity would actually uh, be much greater than the ISB uh, members uh, questioning the, the proposal, the principle, uh, may have been uh, inferring. They also uh, noted that uh, uh, it would be quite complex to update the release pattern uh, of the CSM and they would expect uh, as a result that the insurer would come to a, a similar release pattern for the same contract. Uh, again, to prove to the, uh, CFO, to the ISB that uh, the CFO Forum believes that if uh, the uh, principle of economic reality is applied to this particular uh, element of the model, the result should be uh, positive. In this context, uh, uh, I would like to uh, uh, also talk about the, uh, the law position on these two uh, key elements, the, uh, the single measurement model and the uh, uh, CSM approach. This is where we have actually a, a number of similarities. Deloitte was also supportive of a, of a single measurement model that uh, did not uh, uh, split or bifurcate the, ca the cash flows in, uh, in, in their component parts. They, um, um, the proposal that we put out in our 2013 letter was quite clear in that regard, and that was uh, also, in our opinion, the most uh, important uh, adaptation to the building blocks approach to reflect the uh, uh, continuity of measurement that exists on day one that is uh, clearly uh, stipulated in the, in the paragraph uh, of the exposure draft B66K that requires uh, the outflows to be uh, uh, inclusive of uh, expected payments uh, to policyholders that are both current and future. Uh, in, the in the portfolio participating contracts. So that's, uh, that is an area where we have similarity with the proposal. We also are um, in favor of uh, an, un uh, an unlocking of the CSM that is uh, uh, full, that doesn't distinguish between uh, cash flow changes that are associated with option and guarantees uh, versus others. And so we look at uh, the, the bundle of whole cash flows as the uh, source of the unlocking. And uh, we uh, look at uh, the uh, insurer share as the uh, component that needs to be added to modify the, uh, uh, the algebra of the CSM calculation uh, from non-participating contracts to a participating uh, contract basis. In terms of the uh, um, re release principle, we are also similar uh, on that uh, principle, but we have been uh, perhaps a bit more precise than the civil forum in that we uh, recommend that uh, the principle of fulfillment of a participating contract obligation needs to take into account the fact that there is a, a key uh, obligation, which is the obligation to make the policyholders participate in the underlying item. Again, remember that in our opinion, the presence of underlying items required either by contract or regulation is, is key for the application of this model. And so when those Underlying, underlying items returns are, are transferred into the account of the policy order to us that represent a major step in the fulfillment of the obligations and so that could be a key uh, element of the trigger to uh, release part of the CSM to profit and loss. Apart from this more precise uh, enunciation perhaps, uh, I didn't see any uh, major difference between what we said in 2013 and what the CIFO Forum said in uh, in their alternative proposals. Uh, as the board uh, debated uh, all these, they also 
um, tax upon the unit of account. And, and uh, in particular here, the alternative proposal uh, explains that insurers manage participating contracts uh, and investment portfolios that back these contracts over current and future generations of policyholders. And this um, is one of the key elements that the CFO Forum has considered uh, in order to uh, conclude that the CSM should be determined at a level which is consistent with this business model, uh, which is likely to be uh, offering uh, to insurers a higher level of aggregation than uh, the one reflected in the ISB tentative decisions uh, for non-participating contracts. Uh, in terms of the comments that were raised on this particular uh, point, the uh, alternative proposal would appear to use an open-ended portfolio, uh, and that would mean, uh, in the eyes of uh, a number of ISB members, that uh, you would keep adding new contracts uh, um, to the ones that are already there, uh, this may create, according to some of the ISB uh, members, a situation where there are, there are going to be important uh, cross-subsidies cross between all the new contracts, uh, making it unlikely uh, that uh, the portfolio will become onerous with the negative CSM. Uh, the CIFA Forum responded to that point by uh, observing that uh, they consider that uh, if the contractual arrangements allow for such an offsetting of gains and losses over different generations of policyholders, that becomes the economic reality that uh, financial statements should reflect. And uh, as far as they are concerned, the, the only reasonable and rational answer is to allow for it in the uh, enunciation of the uh, requirements in the standard. That takes me to the uh, last of, uh, of the slides on the, uh, on the meeting. Uh, that talks about presentation and disclosure. As I said, uh, there was not much more discussion on the fifth and the sixth principle around the, the book yield approach and the OCI solution, but there was a, a few other points on disclosure. Um, the first one is that the ISB observed that uh, given this proposal, there may be a need for different types of disclosures to the one that are currently contemplated in the draft uh, concerning uh, the different components uh, and aggregation of insurance contracts uh, so that an investor can have uh, sufficient insights to estimate uh, what is the future profitability and the contribution uh, that each different source um, will provide to the emergence of profit from the, from the, uh, uh, from the company. The ISB also noted that uh, disclosing the expected release of the CSM in future years and the effect of changes in options and guarantees would be a useful disclosure. And in response to these uh, suggestions, uh, which uh, I believe have been taken on board by the CIFO Forum, uh, there was a comment uh, from uh, the representatives there, uh, which uh, noted that uh, under current reporting practices uh, in embedded value reports, um, a number of insurers have uh, actually already started to report uh, the undiscounted release of the value in force, which is the, uh, um, the profit, the embedded value profit that. Uh, and that system is uh, recognized at the point of, of sale of insurance contract. And, and with that, uh, I would like to move now to the last uh, part of our webcast, uh, which is uh, the slide on the next steps and update uh, on, on the timeline. Uh, and here what I want to say is that, uh, uh, as, uh, as explained in the highlights, um, there's been a paper released last week, uh, an ISB staff project update, uh, which uh, gives us uh, uh, some uh, indications on how the uh, ISB timetable uh, will evolve and, uh, and how the redeliberations will continue effectively in 2015. Uh, this paper is not technically an official board paper, but is uh, clearly the closest we get. Now, interestingly and um, somewhat surprisingly, the uh, official uh, ISB work plan continues to uh, indicate um, that uh, the redeliberations will be completed in the fourth quarter of 2014. Clearly, I, I feel that this is a, an unlikely scenario, but um, in any event, we have the ISB staff paper to tell us what the staff thinks. And uh, um, once the um, deliberation that the board is uh, going to undertake next year is completed on participating contracts, uh, the staff uh, uh, plans to brief the ISB on whether non-participating uh, contracts decisions uh, will have to be revisited in light of uh, whatever choices the ISB will have made for the accounting of participating contracts. Um, the ISB um, staff uh, 
states in its paper that uh, the publication of the standard should be towards the end of 2015, uh, hence the uh, six months delay I referred to earlier, uh, and that uh, the uh, delay to the end of uh, next year uh, in terms of publication would have a trigger impact on the selection or the likely selection of the effective date of the standard, which uh, is now likely to be the 1st of January 2019. Uh, given that the ISB has given a public commitment to give approximately three years from the publication date uh, before the standard is mandatorily applicable to insurance companies. Um, the last point is uh, the acknowledgement that uh, this creates uh, um, uh, some serious material difficulties on the interaction uh, uh, with IFRS 9 financial instruments uh, because uh, IFRS 9 will be effective uh, one year earlier if this uh, date is chosen eventually uh, on the 1st of January 2018, and that is uh, already an official published uh, standard. It came out on the 24th of July, if you have not uh, uh, noted it down. Uh, clearly, that is a concern that the ISB staff uh, indicates the board is aware of, and um, the, the bit of good news is that uh, the staff uh, suggests in the, in the paper that uh, the board plans to consider ways to ensure that insurers applying the insurance standard one year later than IFRS 9 are not disadvantaged. Uh, but we'll have to uh, wait and see in the final uh, round of discussion around transition uh, what these um, uh, measures will be. That is uh, the last of uh, my messages for today's webcast. Uh, I take you uh, to the final slide uh, and uh, I would like uh, now to open the floor for any questions uh, uh, whilst uh, um, my team uh, stops the recording.